Spring is coming. And that means a wardrobe shift is about to happen. And today I'm taking out the stress and sharing with you eight ideas on how to simplify your spring capsule wardrobe without the excess. Stay tuned and we'll dive right in along with this week's Petit Plaisir. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination, cultivating true contentment, the art of living a life of quality over quantity. Visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life at our simplified URL, tsll.co or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From a Monday motivational post, recipes, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and readers' favorite regular weekly post, This and That, which is posted each Friday morning. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 351st episode of The Simple Sophisticate. In today's episode, we are talking about spring capsule wardrobes, but really any capsule wardrobe, because I'm going to share with you eight concepts, eight fundamental components for building any capsule wardrobe that will ensure its simplicity, but also your style without the excess that ultimately isn't necessary or may cause you stress if you're not someone who necessarily enjoys the process of building your wardrobe, but you are someone that wants to look their best and feel their best in their clothing without having to think too much each day when you go into your closet and decide what to wear. So today I'm going to share with you a spring capsule wardrobe with these eight components that sings without the excess. Now, before I get into that, today's Petit Plaisir is a book. And as I was going back through the archives, I started to realize I haven't shared a book with you all um, when it comes to a Petit Plaisir recently. So I wanted to share with you this book. In fact, I've been mentioning this book often, but it is wonderful. And it is really a book about how to live well. Um, But it's presented in a very different way. Stay tuned and I'll introduce you to the title and a book that has been on the top 10 bestseller list for the past couple of weeks. All right, but back to our topic today, I want to start with the name Gabrielle. No last name is needed for this character on a well-known Netflix comedy series. In fact, he doesn't have one. They don't even give a last name to this character but it's just not necessary. And even if he did have one, you wouldn't need one because we just know him by Gabrielle. I'm talking about Gabrielle of Emily in Paris fame, and he's played by Lucas Bravo. Gabrielle is the inspiration for today's episode because his clothes, his outfit, his wardrobes, I should say, don't do the talking unlike the rest of the fashion clad cast, but they definitely don't hinder his appeal. In a recent article in the Wall Street Journal, Ashley Ogawa Clark spotlights this character's no excess capsule wardrobe that works to a T. While he works as an up and coming chef in one of the most highly fashionable cities in the world. Granted, it's all fiction, I know. But what I appreciate, and maybe that's fictitious too, that a chef wouldn't care about his wardrobe. I don't know. But I think it might be the more accurate approach to wardrobe um, when it comes to Paris. Because he still looks effortlessly stylish. She goes on to share that costume designer of the show, 
Marilyn Fitzusi, wanted to telegraph that he's, quote, more focused on cooking rather than thinking, how do I look? End quote. In other words, his wardrobe allows the clothes to support the life he lives, showcasing him, but not hogging the stage and letting him shine instead. This observation immediately caught my attention as I was reading through this article, and I found myself shifting recently over the past couple of years when it comes to my own clothing, not away from caring what I chose to wear or choose to wear, but as I become more confident and focused on running this simply luxurious life and, the, and all the components of the business solely, choosing a wardrobe that is simple yet stylish requires less thought, but looks smart and yet effortless. With the release of the Simply Luxurious Life's annual spring shopping guide arriving soon, coming up here on March 1st, which is a Wednesday, today's episode will share ideas for preparing ourselves for how to be savvy shoppers with clarity about what a capsule wardrobe entails without having to worry about the excess. Because that often is what makes it frustrating. That's often the untranslatable piece that we are newly introduced to. And we're like, oh, how do I incorporate that? No, let's let that go, which are typically trends and simplify this process that with all the options out there can be a little overwhelming in and of itself. But if we have these eight basic tools or approaches, it becomes more enjoyable. So to follow Albert Einstein's advice, although I doubt he was referring to wardrobe shopping, quote, make everything as simple as possible, but not simpler. After all, we want to look our best. We want to feel our best, but we don't want it to be about the clothes. We want to shine. We want to look our best and be able to live the life we love living. So let's take a look at these eight ways to simplify in order to amplify as we invest in key items for our spring capsule wardrobe. Number one, here we go. So if you love a particular cut or a particular style or a particular length, buy it in multiples, but in different colors. Now, this is a piece of advice that is well known. Buy multiples of what you love, but something that Gabrielle, the character in Emily in Paris, demonstrates well, but that is not often advised, is that the colors for the same style are different. So you're buying multiples, but you're first becoming a student of your skin's undertones, as well as what complements your hair color, And then you purchase different colors in that same style, whether it's a shirt, a pair of pants, a skirt, a dress, a jacket that works well with your silhouette, your lifestyle, and your personal taste. You're not just buying multiples in any color that's available. You want ones that whatever the color is that you've chosen, you want to wear that t-shirt. You want to wear that coat. You want to wear that jacket. Now, this is important because Once you have that key information that is only going to be valuable to you, you really have simplified the process right out of the gate. When you know your colors, when you know what works well with your skin tone, your hair color, then you already have narrowed down the options, which then simplifies the process. So that's number one. We're going to start with that. If you love something, buy it in multiples, but in different colors. And again, this might be, hey, remember, we're going to invest. This is, this is an investment capsule wardrobe because we want it to last. So you might be able, not be able to buy multiples all at once. I think that's really important to say here because they're going to be expensive individually. So maybe you just keep in mind this brand, this cut, this style, and you wait for the sales. Or you buy one this year and then one buy one the next season and so on and so forth. And, and with that said, when you do it that way, you're actually confirming that, yes, you do love this style. And so you're not making um, a rash decision or an impulse purchase. All right. So that's number one. Number two, denim just works. So invest in it. Buy multiples of the exact same pair, then alter. Something that was suggested in the article that I read in the Wall Street Journal mentioned just a second ago is that this idea of... Denim is just something that works for men and women. And all eight of these points that I'm talking about today are applicable to men or women's capsule wardrobes. In fact, that article is about men's style. But I took it and I said, well, this is applicable to women too. And the thing is, denim really just works. And you can dress up denim. You can make it more casual. I think that's 
why it works so well for so many people, but it's also the reason why don't be afraid to buy the same thing again and again and again. And this is a case where maybe buy, if you can, buy multiples in the same instance, especially if there's a sale and you know something fits you really well, because what you're going to do, and again, you want to buy quality denim. In other words, you don't want there to be too much stretch. What you're going to do is based on the different shoes you wear, you're going to tailor the hem length to fit whatever shoe would work with that length of denim. So maybe you have a particular pair of jeans that you wear with flats. And so then you're going to have that jean cut just above the ankle. All right. Or maybe you wear them with heel with heels and you just want that long crop, not a short crop. No, no, no. Crop pants. They cut your calf in half. We don't want to do that. This is just, just dressing or kissing the heel. But then maybe you also want a little bit longer hem because you're going to wear boots, booties. And so that's where you would keep it long. This is where you need to have your shoes. And we're going to talk about that in one of our points later on. But the key thing here is if a jean looks great on you, whether it's dark denim or medium wash, whatever it is, maybe you have different colors of jeans, salmon. We have a teacher that I used to work with. He had a salmon pair of jeans. The students loved it. He actually looked really great in them. Um, He thought it was a hoot, but whatever color of denim that works well for you and your wardrobe, just tailor the lengths for whatever pair of shoes you have and wear them with. When it comes to spring or summer, you're likely going to have a pair of denim jeans that are going to have a slightly shorter hem because of the sandals, because of the sneakers, because of the the flats and loafers we just talked about. But it's for winter that you'll probably have a little longer to make sure those ankles are covered when you do wear your booties, so on and so forth. All right, so that's number two. Denim just works, so invest in it and buy multiples of the exact same pair, then alter. Number three, find a jacket or blazer that you love and don't stray. Again, buy multiples, but do so in different colors. Now, For me, I love a good oversized blazer and I will be hunting down a great one this spring because I need more of them. I used to have, I still have a bunch of blazers, but they're not oversized and I love them for teaching, but now I want oversized. And so I'm gradually building that, um, that component in my wardrobe. I have two right now, but the key thing here is they don't have to be from the same brand. Although when you do find a style and a cut and a length that works really well for you, you're probably going to return to that brand again and again, but you don't have to. It's the cut you want to know about that works best for you. And then you keep shopping for that particular cut, that particular length with regards to how, how long it hits on your thigh. And, and when it comes to a jacket, the length of sleeves and, and the fit in your shoulders And of course, the neckline, do you want collar or no collar? This is where, okay, this is what looks best for me. That's the style I want. Everything else I'm going to ignore. I'm homing in on exactly this style. And this is also where you focus on not just changing up the color, but changing up the fabric to either dress up or down. And so that you can go and do what you need to do and pay no mind to what you're wearing because you look and feel great. So number three is going to lead us to number four. So we just said that we want multiple jackets in different colors and different fabrics. So that's number three. Speaking of different materials, so different fabrics, number four is switch up the materials. You're going to have a basic wardrobe. That's what the simplicity part of this is but you don't have to have the same material. So with regards to keeping it simple without the excess, you apply what you know with regards to the style of whatever item we're talking about. It could be the jacket, could be the denim, could be the the shirts, could be the coat, the dress, whatever it is. But now you're going to, without the fluff, just change up the material. A simple slub tee, for example, under an oversized blazer with ankle hemmed denim, simple uniform outfit. It's done and it's looking great. It's very easy to put together. Then you throw your crossbody bag over your shoulder and you go about your daily business. But come the weekend or an evening out, you change the denim jeans to crepe pants with the same length and finish, maybe even a slight dark navy fabric in crepe, but they're not denim. The key thing is that you know the length, you know the waist height, you know the fit you want, in the hem of the of the the pant, but you're gonna change up the material. You add the blazer, you add the tee, they still work, but you have punched it up a bit. Simple wardrobe, 
you look great still, but you've elevated it just enough. So that's where you have this key idea of the fit, the length, the silhouette, the style, and then you change up the colors, you change up the fabric. And that's what keeps it simple without the excess. So that's number four. Now I have four more ideas to share with you. The first I want to introduce you to two sponsors and then I'll be right back to get back into this list of how to create a spring capsule wardrobe that is simple without the excess. Winter is better with Bombas. They make thoughtfully designed clothes that make you feel cozy at home, supported during outdoor activities, and good knowing that for every item you purchase, they donate another to someone in need. So just imagine, close your eyes, thinking about your socks, your underwear, your t-shirts, anything that feels cozy and good, much like a fireplace or a soft cloud. What you're imagining are Bombas, the thoughtfully designed, better basics that'll keep you comfy all winter long. Speaking of the socks, I wear them every single time I head to the mountain. These are their mid-calf socks and they stay up, which is key when you have boots in the snow and you don't want the snow in your shoe and getting you cold. If your sock falls down, it's like, oh no, these socks stay up and these socks last. I have been wearing their socks the past three years and they are still looking great. Socks, underwear, and t-shirts are the number one, two, and three most requested items in homeless shelters. And that's why for every comfy item you purchase, Bombas donates another comfy item to someone experiencing homelessness. Every item is seamless, tagless, and luxuriously soft. Bombas are the clothes you'll want to cozy up in all winter long. Merino socks and t-shirts are ultra soft, super breathable, and never itchy, making them perfect for winter workouts and cozy relaxing. Are you a winter jogger, a skier, or a snowboarder? Bombas makes temperature regulating clothing so you can feel more comfortable doing what you love most. As a simple sophisticate listener, go to bombas.com slash sophisticate and use code sophisticate for 20% off your first purchase. That's bombas, B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash sophisticate. And be sure to use promo code sophisticate at checkout. The Simple Sophisticate is also sponsored by Brooklinen. Who else is ready for a long weekend? Get the rest you deserve with help from Brooklinen. They make luxurious home essentials and for a limited time you can save on all things comfort during their President's Day sale. Brooklinen sources only the best materials for their products so you can drift off without a care. With those high quality materials comes coziness and longevity so investments in your space last. Get the comfort that over 100,000 happy customers are raving about with five star reviews. Looking to level up your home? Upgrade two spaces at once with Brooklinen's customizable bed and bath bundles, saving you time and money. Having had the opportunity to sleep on their sheets, they are soft and cozy and truly luxurious, generally welcoming a wonderful night's sleep. But don't sleep on these savings. Brooklinen's President's Day sale is happening now. Listening after the sale? Get the deals of your dreams at brooklinen.com with promo code SIMPLE. That's brooklinen, B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com with promo code SIMPLE. Welcome back. So number five, we're just going to dive right in here. I don't know about you, but I am actually very excited for spring to come with regards to my wardrobe, my garden, so many things, but always knowing that I look confident and put together, but making it effortless. And that's what we're talking about today. How to build a spring capsule wardrobe without the excess. So keeping it simple. Number five is find your pop of color and home in on that and nothing else except with regards to neutrals. So something I wrote about, um, in a particular post um, about six months ago on the blog, and I linked to it on the show notes for today's episode. I speak about this more generally, but it's knowing what colors work for you and to forget the rest. Keeping in mind that the colors you come up with work with each other, and then you begin to drill down a bit more specifically. You stick to the neutrals, all except one color. Now, the image that I paired with today's show notes is just a picture of about four different clothing items from my closet. They're not new. They're items that I have worn for spring, will wear for spring, and you'll notice they're 
all pretty much neutrals. So I have a, a, a tan or a deep khaki midi skirt, a uh, pencil skirt. I have a striped tank. I have a light blue oversized button up shirt. And I have a denim blazer jacket that's a, a wrapped waist. All very classic neutral colors. The blue, because it's not navy, I consider navy a neutral. This blue is a little bit lighter. So this would be the color that I go to. I don't have a lot of that light blue. I used to have more of that. What my go-to color is, as far as pop and wow and woohoo, is a cool undertone pink. And I go to that color only. I don't go to purples. I don't go to yellows. I don't go to reds. I don't go to greens. I now know what color works best with the other neutrals I have. And my other neutrals, and I shared this in that particular post, I don't wear white very often anymore. Instead, I wear cream. I wear navy, tan, or camel. And that's, and then denim. And that's pretty much it. What is so nice about doing this and keeping that simple is that I have so many outfit combinations that can mix and match together. I can change up the camisole that goes under that blazer. I can change out the skirt that goes with that top. It makes it so much simpler because the decision making, my mind is put at ease because I know I have colors that work together and they're not just a one-off. So find your one color. And like I said, you might have a secondary color that's already in your closet. You know it works well. Go with it. The key is when you're shopping for new items, what is that standout awesome color that looks great on you? And as you start to look and shop online, it becomes easier to not be distracted by the other colors that are gorgeous and beautiful. No, don't, don't get me wrong. And will, would look fabulous on other people. All right. But this is to help save you time, reduce your stress, and give you more options than not having enough options. It helps you to filter. Now, this may sound boring, but there is no reason for me, for example, to attempt to dress like a style influencer or like Emily in Paris or Carrie Bradshaw. I adore each of their courageous ensembles, and they look amazing. But what I gain from watching them, because I do love watching them for the fashion, both those shows are ideas of what types of items can go together. So what I'm looking for is, okay, she has those different types of items layered together. Wow, that's impressive. Oh, I'm not going to try that, but I will try this. And then I return to my color palette, which may be different from theirs. And my mind is more at ease or at peace knowing that what I purchase, because I know my color palette, will work with what I already have. So I'm watching for maybe a different idea. I'm not watching for that particular item and I'm going to go shop that particular item. I'm just seeing what they put together. And then I stick to what I know what works well for me. And then I start creating my signature style with simplicity and without the excess. So that's number five. Find your pop of color and home in on that and nothing else except for your neutrals. And again, I've linked to that one article I mentioned that's titled Finding Your Personal Style and Why It Will Free You from worrying about seasonal trends and others' opinions about what you wear. Number six, stick to the basics for types of clothing and avoid trends. I'm repeating myself a bit here with the avoiding trends here. But to relieve any confusion and fret about what to buy each season, walk away from worrying about trying to figure out the trends and instead return to the basics basic tees, oversized button-up shirts, blazers, A-line skirts, or wrap dresses, whatever length of dress or skirt fits you best, knee-high boots, flats, ballet or loafers, blazers, etc. And within those basics, become the student of yourself and know the answer to the following question. Here it goes. What flatters me? From necklines to hem lengths to sleeve lengths to heel height to waist height, what flatters me? Be honest with yourself, but also let yourself shine and have fun once you know this, the answer to this question. And, and, and by doing this, you have simplified the process, making the decision making easier. The selection is now streamlined and therefore you can narrow down what is available for you to choose from without draining your energy, flipping and scrolling through item after item after item which is ultimately how frustration builds up. We see more of what we don't want than what we do. But when we have an answer to that question, what flatters me, 
the opposite begins to happen because you have edited out what wouldn't be best for your wardrobe. You feel as though you have ample options and the shopping begins to become more enjoyable again. All about sticking to the basics. And there are some fabulous basics out there. All right, just invest in quality and they will be with you for a very long time. We'll talk more about that in a second. All right, so that's number six. Stick to the basics for types of clothing and avoid the trends. Number seven, let's talk about shoes for a minute. I mentioned I would earlier in the episode. And here we go. Number seven, keep your shoe options to four with variations. So what I'm getting at is the four different types of shoes to always have in your closet. Part of the stress of dressing well is often having the shoe we need or not having the shoe we need. So let's simplify this aspect of dressing um, with regards to our capsule wardrobes as well. Make sure you have these four types of shoes in your closet and make sure they are investment pieces because a shoe, as I mentioned many years ago, and I still live by this advice, if I can afford it, of course, is Candace Bergen when she was a star on uh, Murphy Brown One of her best advice that she gave to one of her co-stars was your shoes seal the deal. Invest in shoes. They are the polish, the finish. They wrap up the package of your wardrobe and make it just sing, to use our verb of choice in today's episode. So what are those, those four? First of all, each of these four will be quality purchases and they will fit you well. So don't skimp in either arena. Make sure these are shoes that will go the distance. So maybe, you know, four or five years down the road, you might have to resole them, but they're still going to look great. And then, of course, make sure they fit you well. Number one, you want a trainer or a sneaker that fits what you need. So make sure the width looks good with your proportions and your physique, so not too wide. Make sure you choose the best material for your lifestyle. Maybe it's canvas or leather. Depends again on how you're going to wear it, where you're going to wear it. And then choose a color that will work with your outfits. Two, you want a pump or heel to your choosing for work and for dress. So choose a height that flatters your leg and is comfortable to wear in a color or colors that work with your wardrobe. Number three, a boot. Whether it's an ankle or a knee high boot, determine the heel height for your lifestyle always have a boot. And four, you need a flat of your preference, pointed toe or slightly rounded or a loafer, etc. So start with those four. So begin with ensuring you have one of each of these that is high quality and then build on what you have. So making sure that you have those four, maybe then get you then get multiple heels, but in different colors. Maybe you get multiple flats, but in different colors. Same with the boots, things like that. So as long as you have those four, you're at least going to be able to mix and match for the seasons, really. Um, Of course, you can add sandals to this as well. That might be your flat of choice in the summertime, actually, depending on where you live. But if you have those four components and they're well made, you don't need a lot of shoes. So be careful. And that would be the excess, right? We're talking excess. I have really pared down my shoes over the years um, because if I really think about which shoes I wear, especially now that I'm not teaching, there are only a handful that I wear each season. And so I'm then better able to hone in on what exactly I am going to wear this season and I can save up and invest in one pair each season. In fact, this last fall, I invested in two different boots, an ankle pair and a knee-high pair, two boots that I've always worn in my closet. It's taken a while to get to that point and also to find exactly what I wanted. And it was, those are staple shoes I will wear every fall and winter season now. So that's number seven. Keep your shoe options to four with variations. Last but not least, number eight. We're going to conclude with this thought. It will not surprise you, but I really want to drill down on it to impress on you that this is what's going to make your wardrobe simple, but also stylish and effortless. Make selecting quality over quantity your modus operandi. So your way of shopping. At the core of living simply luxuriously is to live a life of quality over quantity in all arenas of our life. And so with our capsule wardrobe, as I have shared many times before, choose quality items. Even if you can only buy one item this season instead of the handful you would prefer that one if made well fits you smashingly and complements your awesomeness is worth the price keeping in mind the rule of investment cost per wear and let that long-term benefit ease your mind 
from boots to coats to sweaters and dresses, blazers and camisoles. When I purchase a quality item, it continues to be worn year after year for years to come. As an example, I wrote a detailed post on my first purchase of a Burberry trench and my only purchase from Burberry. But while I waited for years to be able to purchase it, and I think I purchased it back in 2017, it is still in fantastic shape and it's been six years later and I do wear it constantly in both spring and fall months. It has been a cost per wear that has been a very smart purchase. So again and again and again, with advice shared in fashion magazines and even in master classes by fashion experts, the advice shared for keeping your wardrobe simple but stylish is, yep, you guessed it, choose quality over quantity. Ultimately, what you're doing when it comes to creating a capsule wardrobe that sings but without the excess is investing in multiple versions of the uniform you look your best in and that complements the life you love living. So number eight is make selecting quality over quantity your modus operandi. With all of that said, look for the Simply Luxurious Life Spring Shopping Guide to be available on the blog on Wednesday, March 1st, where I will shop more than 70 items that are available in the new spring collections and items worth investing in so that you will have and wear them for years to come. The items that I will shop range from low mid items, such as items from J. Crew and Madewell, to mid range luxury, which are Theory, Vince, L.K. Bennett, etc., to a few luxury finds. Many of the designers found Aneta Porte. As always, you can peruse the Simply Luxurious Life's boutique or shop where I have shopped capsule wardrobe items that are updated with timeless finds for all of the seasons. On that page, you will also find the past spring and fall shopping guides that were most recently posted on the blog. So fall 2022 and spring 2022 as well. And you can also always shop the capsule wardrobe boutique. When you go to the menu, you see the word shop on the menu bar on the blog. A drop down menu will appear and you just click on capsule wardrobe. All right. So there you have it. We are getting ready for spring. It is almost a month away officially on the calendar but just knowing how we're going to approach it knowing what will eliminate unnecessary frustration or stress is helpful and you can check out the show notes at the simply luxurious life.com slash podcast 351 and I'll be right back with this week's petit plaisir <music> So this week's Petit Plaisir is a book that was released on January 17th of this year, 2023. And it's the first book written by highly respected record producer Rick Rubin. He has worked with the likes of Adele to Ed Sheeran to Red Hot Chili Peppers. He has worked with a variety of musicians from all different musical genres um, for decades. And now his first book, which actually took him seven years to bring to publication is titled The Creative Act, A Way of Being. And if you've stopped by the blog or if you're a top tier member, you know I've talked quite a bit about this book as I slowly read through it and I had to intentionally force myself to slowly read through it because I wanted to just devour it. It is a unique book because as it says in the subtitle, A Way of Being, this is not for someone who's a musician solely. I mean, I'm not a musician. It's not for anyone who is in a technically, you know, a formally defined creative uh, field. This is a book about how to live well and to be present. And he begins with a disclaimer. He writes, he writes, nothing in this book is known to be true. It's a reflection of what I've noticed, not facts so much as thoughts Um, at the very beginning of the book. So, you know, he does not claiming he he's an expert on this, but through his various examples that he has shared in different podcast interviews, it's clear that he has found how, how being in a certain way can actually open up the door to creativity and ahas and discoveries about your journey, about your life, about your calling, whatever you want to call it. My own book is full of annotations and I'll just read a handful of the ones that um, are quotes or passages that I highlighted with regards to awareness, and, and a lot of these things are indirectly 
alluding to things that we have talked about here on this blog when it comes to contentment and mindfulness and presence and awareness. He writes in his chapters, and, and by the way, his chapters are very short. So the longest chapter is four pages. Most chapters are two or three pages. And then in between most of the chapters, he includes a quote just on one singular page, a short little quote, not necessarily always from him. In fact, it's usually from someone else that fits with the particular theme in the previous chapter or sometimes in the subsequent chapter. He writes in chapter, it's always there. As an analogy, he references the sun. I'm strongly affected by the sun. When it's a bright day, I feel energized. When it's gloomy, I'm gloomy. On those overcast days, it helps to tune into the fact that the sun is still there. It's just hidden behind a thick layer of clouds. And if you are a meditation um, student, a student of meditation, you know this is very similar to the idea of meditation and contentment with regards to our emotions and our feelings. He writes, At noon, the sun is high in the sky, regardless of how light or dark it is outside. And here's what he compares all this to. In the same way, regardless of how much we're paying attention, the information we seek is out there. If we're aware, we get to tune in to more of it. If we're less aware, we miss it. So all of this is conceptual and which also I think makes it easier to apply to so many different ways of living and in your life and my life and all the different ways that one can live contentedly. But what's beautiful about it is that I know and I already have that I will refer to this book for inspiration. Every person that I know who has read this book, um, that was drawn to read this book and pick it up. In fact, I was talking to a consignment book owner um, here in Bend, and she was saying she was halfway through and absolutely enjoying it, and it will be a part of her library forever. Um, is this book is full of things to just really nosh on and think about, and oh, that's true. And the power of being is that you're not expecting. If you're being, fully being, so being fully you, being fully present, being fully aware, is you may not know what you're going to discover, but there is magic to discover. And that's where the creativity act or the creative act is that he speaks about. One more, he talks about taste. So as an example, that this is not a book just about art, he speaks about um, the choices we make, and it's in the title, Submerge. And he writes with reference, references to exploring and keeping an open mind. This applies to every choice we make, not just with art, but with friends we choose, the conversations we have, even the thoughts we reflect on. All of these aspects affect our ability to distinguish good from very good, very good from great. They help us determine what's worthy of our time and attention. I could go on and on and on, but if you are looking for inspiration in small dosages, or just some new ideas to ponder, this is the book I think you will love. And it has a beautiful, simple linen book cover, and uh, it's a very nondescript in that regard. But man, I, I like holding it too. It's kind of cool. Anyway, this book was and is actually still on the top 10 um, bestseller list. I saw it in both the New York Times bestseller list and the Wall Street Journal bestseller list for January and portions of February. So it is something that is um, piquing people's interest, that's for sure. All right, the book is titled The Creative Act, A Way of Being by Rick Rubin, and I will link to it on the show notes. You can find the direct page link to it at the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash pp351. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. I want to thank you very much for tuning in today, and I'll be back with a brand new episode on Wednesday, March 1st. Until then, have a wonderful rest of February and wishing you many moments to bring a smile. Bonjour. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, with the shortened URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com. 
For more in-depth exploration of how to cultivate your own unique, simply luxurious life, pick up my new book, which became both a bestseller and number one new release in France Travel, The Road to Le Papillon, Daily Meditations on True Contentment, available in all four formats for your preferred reading or listening. My first book, titled Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, and my second book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, are also available in each of the four formats. Readers can now join the more intimate the Simply Luxurious Life international community by becoming members of the blog, which offers the benefits of ad-free reading site-wide, unlimited access and exclusive access to content on the blog, such as the monthly A Couple Moments with Shannon video chat, tours of my home Le Papillon, the monthly What Made Me Smile post, and monthly Ponderings post, as well as the exclusive opportunity to enter all of the giveaways during the annual French and British Weeks. To stay caught up on all things Simply Luxurious, the podcast, blog posts, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news, as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart each new month, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Live's free monthly newsletter, arriving on the last day of each month in your inbox. There is also a weekly newsletter, which is also free, and arrives each Friday to keep you caught up on the recent weekly posts on the blog. Enjoy with a hot cuppa or cup of morning coffee, and stay in the know about all things Simply Luxurious. Look for two new episodes of this podcast on the first and third Wednesday of each month. And until next time, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Thank you for tuning in. Bonjour.